Hello again, folks. This is Barry with Barry's 8-Track and Classic Car Radio Repair. And uh, once again, I've got something unusual and somewhat exciting to uh, share with you guys. Uh, when a customer uh, purchases the, uh, the full Delco conversion package, uh, meaning that the 8-Track is also converted to uh, provide the best sound through their converted radio, uh, the, the price is, uh, is pretty steep. And so I thought I would show you uh, at least uh, what kind of work goes into the restoration or the conversion of the 8-Track. Um, first, I'll show you what comes out. Um, this comes out. This is uh, basically your filter capacitors, one of the output transformers that gets chucked. Uh, this is uh, the set of driver, oops, <laughs> this is the, uh, the, the set of driver transformers for the unit that gets chucked. This is the existing uh, tape head preamp board that goes. This is the existing uh, the power amplifier board uh, on units that are so equipped with their own power amps. Uh, since the uh, A track after conversion will just be sending a line level signal to the converted radio, we no longer need this, so this, this goes. Uh, this is another one of the output transformers that goes. Uh, this is the heat sink that the output transistors are mounted on. Uh, since I need that space to put my speed control board in there, there's no need for that. I, I do hold on to the aluminum heat sink because uh, they can come in handy for quite a few things. Uh, we end up with a lot of extra hardware because there's a lot of stuff that's no longer no longer uh, going to go back in. So we end up with, uh, with a whole bunch of extra screws, which is always kind of nice. And then uh, this is just basically the, uh, the wiring that I pulled out of it, um, the output transistors, little odds and ends like that. Uh, some of that can be reused for other things. Um, some of it can't, and I'll sort through that stuff later. And so now we'll show you what's left of the 8-track <laughs> player. Um, this is it. There's not much left of it. Um, some, you know, some of this stuff will go back in, of course, but uh, basically we just completely strip the 8-track down, uh, remove everything. If I'm, if I'm going to get this deep into the 8-track uh, section, you know, I might as well go ahead and clean it off, too. So we take a little fine steel wool, we shine up everything. We've got uh, an important ground connection here, so we remove the, uh, the, the automatic track change sensor, get rid of that, and we sand underneath that to make that a, a good connection again. And uh, needless to say, we take our fine steel wool and we shine up that automatic track change sensor so it makes proper contact again. About the only thing that uh, stays inside the A-Track is the, uh, the multipole switch, the uh, track change mechanism, which uh, also consists of this. You might see that thing turning the cam to move that head up and down. And then in the back, as you can see, we've removed all the wiring, uh, all the wiring that goes to the original controls. I do use, I do leave the original controls in place, but I remove all the wiring just because I like a nice clean setup down there. It also gives me room to get in there and clean everything real nice. So we'll set that aside. Uh, this is uh, the cap stand that, of course, will be resurfaced in my sandblaster and reinstalled. This is the, uh, the original motor. Uh, that goes, it's, it's replaced by an adjustable speed motor. Um, I remove the pulley using heat from a blowtorch and stick it on the new motor. And then this is the, uh, basically the, the motor mounting bracket. And uh, well, it won't go in there with the wires in the way right now, but um, this, uh, this will be flattened, this area here, this will be flattened in my, uh, in my 12 ton pressed. Uh, to make a nice smooth surface to mount my new motor in there, or actually your new motor if you're the customer. Okay, so that uh, that kind of goes uh, into a pretty deep uh, explanation of uh, what happens with your uh, 8-track player when it gets converted to, uh, to modern electronics and to sound best through the uh, converted radio. I will be building a brand new tape head preamp by hand. Uh, that'll go in here. And then, of course, the uh, speed control board for my new motor is going to be mounted in here also. And so now this is the uh, this is the tape head assembly. Uh, it's a pretty elaborate deal on the Delco T200. And uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, demonstrate how I test um, whether it's magnetized or not, whether it needs to be demagnetized. So uh, if you'll bear with me for just a moment, I'm going to refocus this camera on my Gauss meter, which measures a degree of magnetism.
Okay, now you're looking at one of my Gauss meters. Um, since I was about 12 or 13 and knew the existence of the word, I always thought it was pronounced Goss. So you may uh, you may hear me pronouncing that word Goss from time to time. Uh, you, you saying Gauss is just some, for some reason a really hard thing for me. Let's get our white balance adjusted and our and our focus and all that cool stuff. Okay, and now uh, you can't see the center, and I do apologize for the uh, need to interrupt to, to uh, refocus the camera. I do have a 32 camera system in my video recording system, but uh, in order to get the, it is the springtime rush, and I'm trying to get jobs out, so I have not yet completed my uh, master switching system for all my cameras. Anyway, this is our Gauss meter, and uh, the first thing I'll say is that uh, the unit Gauss is uh, a unit of uh, magnetism, of uh, the unit of measurement of magnetism. And uh, the Earth's magnetic field is understood to be half of one Gauss. Uh, I currently have this uh, meter set uh, to read one Gauss uh, full scale. So I'll show you the, uh, the magnetism of the Earth's magnetic field. First, we're going to, uh, we have to adjust. We, I have to move my probe to where there's minimum influence of the Earth's magnetic field. And I'm going to zero it out here. Okay, and now I'm going to uh, turn this uh, sensor to where it crosses the Earth magnetic flux, uh, the Earth's magnetic flux, line, flux lines. So here we go. And as you can see, we're reading, uh, right now we're reading just over half of one Gauss. So this is a pretty doggone accurate meter. Uh, right now, we'll, all we're measuring is the Earth's magnetic field. So now, to get an accurate reading from a head, I need to zero out so that I know exactly how many Gauss this head is magnetized. I need to zero out the Earth's magnetic field. So I'm going to reach up, and I'm going to put this back to zero, and that will eliminate the uh, Earth's magnetic field in our measurement. Now, anything that we put up to this uh, sensor is going to measure only the degree of magnetism of my head, for instance. First, I'm going to try, this is just the, uh, you might be able to see it, I'm just going to try the metal, the metal part of my little brush here, and I'm going to put this up to the center and see if that has any magnetism. And as you can see, it's a pretty, pretty negligible amount of magnetism. Now I'm going to put the, uh, the tape head up against the center. Okay, now we are measuring, uh, we're right at, uh, almost one Gauss. I'm going to remove the head to make sure that I'm still at zero. That's pretty close to zero. And we're going to put our head back up to, uh, to the sensor slowly. You can see it climbing slowly. Now we're right on top of the sensor and we're reading oh, almost one full Gauss. At its, uh, at its most magnetized point. This is a very sensitive meter, so it takes a little while to get this thing oriented just right to where I'm measuring the, uh, the actual magnetism of this head. So anyway, okay, so at any rate, the, the maximum, there we are, now we're getting a, a better reading here, a little bit more uh, magnetism. So we're still at less than one full Gauss. At its highest setting, we'll probably if I really sat here and messed with it, I could probably get it up to read one full Gauss. Now you can find the uh, the standards of the recording industry uh, online. I forgot the name of it, but if you just look it up, you can find the book of standards in the recording industry. And that uh, that set of standards states uh, that um, that a, a tape head will begin to harm the recording on a tape. Uh, somewhere between three and five gauss. So that means that the degree of magnetism of this head is not quite such that it needs to be demagnetized. Uh, in fact, if I do try to demagnetize it, I may only magnetize it more uh, if I'm not super careful. Uh, so I'll have to decide whether or not to demagnetize this particular head because I'll show you some other stuff too. Let's go back to our gauss meter and I'm going to show you some other parts of the tape deck uh, that have become magnetized. Okay, we're going to, let's Take this back to a read zero Gauss. Okay, it's drifted a touch, so I'm going to have to uh, readjust my, my zeroing. I'm going to make sure that we measure this thing at the most magnetized point from the Earth's magnetic field, which is right about there. 
and it'll also go in the other direction. Okay. And I want to make sure that my Alrighty, so let's go in and re-zero this thing. Okay, that, that's pretty, pretty good. We're going to measure our capstan, because we can see our capstan uh, is not very magnetized. On some machines, the capstan will actually be much more magnetized than the, uh, than the head. Okay, now we're reading a little bit off of the, uh, off the capstan. We can get that up to about, looks like about half of one gauss. Let's take the, uh, let's take this little mounting bracket that the motor goes into. Take a look at that. We're going to bring that up to our sensor. We can see that there's a little bit of magnetism there too. And right where the motor shaft comes out and meets with the pulley, naturally there's some magnetic fields being generated at that point. So look at that. We are actually more magnetized there than we were at the head or at least about as, no, nope, actually more. So we, uh, we're getting more magnetized, we're getting more magnetization from the motor mounting uh, bracket, where the motor, of course, is generating some magnetic fields. Let's just, uh, for fun, take a look at our automatic track chain sensor, because the tape runs over that also. Okay, we guess remember where our okay, that's where our, we're, we're, we'll call that zero for right now, just because I don't feel like uh, reaching up and and messing with it again. So we're going to hold our probe in one place. We're going to bring our track chain sensor up to it. And uh, the tape runs over that too, so that's, it's understandable that, that that would be a little bit magnetized. Okay, so none of the uh, parts in the tape deck are as magnetized as the tape head are. And let me just get a maximum reading on this thing again and zero it out. And we can, we can retry our head. And as I mentioned before, this is a very, very sensitive instrument. Uh, it's actually not even on its most sensitive range. Uh, this thing will go down to one-tenth of one gauss full scale and up to about 30,000 gauss uh, on the maximum setting. So let's try our head one more time if I can find it. Okay, there's our, there's our, there's our head, our tape head. We're going to bring our tape head up to the sensor. And yet we, we are measuring a quite a bit, uh, you know, a fairly dramatic difference between that and no magnetization at all. But we're still looking at only one, one full gauss of, uh, of magnetism. So this, this tape head does not really need to be magnetized. And as I mentioned before, trying to demagnetize it if it's not done exactly correctly and meticulously uh, could very well magnetize it even more. So there's a little demonstration of our of the use of, a, of my Gauss meter to measure the uh, degree of tape head, tape head magnetization. And uh, basically, if no other reason, to, uh, to just uh, kind of show that I can tell exactly how magnetized a head is before I even try to demagnetize it. Whereas, uh, you know, a, a home hobbyist or possibly even another shop might just go straight to demagnetizing it and possibly magnetize it even more in the process because there's a, it's just not possible to fully demagnetize. Um, and you can read about this online. Uh, many sources will explain uh, the demagnetization process of a tape head. And it's not the type of thing where you put the thing up to the head and it demagnetizes it. You have to follow flux lines. You have to do it in certain directions. And basically, you go from being magnetized in one direction to being magnetized in another direction, on and on and on, until you finally reach an equilibrium to where there's no magnetization at all. And that's, in theory, possible in actual practice from my experience. Uh, it's really not practical to think that you can completely demagnetize um, anything to where it's down to, you know, basically less than the Earth's magnetic field. Uh, the Earth's magnetic field is half of one Gauss. This head reads slightly double that, so that's only double uh, the Earth's magnetic field as, it's, as it flows throughout this room. Um, that's not much of a difference at all. I mean, uh, you know, even if I had to magnetize the thing to where it's actually at zero gauss, uh, it's just a matter of time before just sitting on a table or on a shelf or in your garage in storage, it's going to be back up to half a gauss just because the Earth's magnetic field is a constant influence on it and, uh, and will magnetize it. So um, on that happy note, I'll uh, 
get on out of here. This is Barry with Barry's 8-track and classic car radio repair uh, showing uh, what all goes into the uh, uh, the conversion of a customer's 8-track machine, which justifies the, uh, the somewhat pricey figure. Uh, if you have an 8-track home or car deck in need of service, you can reach me directly at 928-533-9666. Uh, you can visit my website, which is barrys 8 trackrepaircom B-A-R-R-Y-S, number 8, trackrepair.com. And uh, on that, we will get on out of here. Thank you very much for watching and listening, and we'll see you next time. Having fun, driving my classic ride Got a Mustang, but it's a 69 But she ain't sounding so fine Driving this car, I can't hear the guitar And all my tapes run slow too Radio smoking, 8-track decks broken What can I do? Send it to 8-track Repair Center 8-track Repair Center 8-track Repair Center.com